Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin. Today I'm joined by Diane. We're going fishing. We're going to do it old school style. She's using nothing but a willow pole. I'm using the tin can hobo rig. We're about to slay a whole bunch of bluegill. So Diane is using a cane pole. I'm gonna use what's called a hobo fishing rig. So wrapping it around a tin can, you can wrap it around a Coke bottle or whatever you have. You can even carve this uh, little hand spool out of wood, make it kind of carved looking like a bowling pin. So you'd hold the top of the bowling pin, wrap your line around the thicker part, and you can either cast like that or more likely what I usually do is just kind of lasso, throw it, and let the line spool off. And then when you need to reel it back in, you just wrap it around. So, here's my rig. It's gonna be a simple J hook, size sixes. Simple little split shot. I'm not even using a bobber. I'm gonna use just a piece of stick here because we're going for really small fish. This water here is drying up. So by the end of summer, there will be no water here and all these fish will be dead. So either wildlife will eat them or we'll eat them. And there's plenty to go around. They're starting out like this. Diane's already caught two and I haven't even been able to put a, a worm on yet. We've only been here for five minutes. And if we only catch little ones, I don't care. Bushcraft style, we're just gonna cook up some little fish. It's gonna be delicious and it's gonna be fun. Anyway, hobo fishing, let's get to it. <laughs> Good job, babe. <laughs> it's a tiny baby. <laughs> Let's see. If this was survival, dude, I'd be stoked to catch even fish this size. And I still am stoked. Baby, there's like a 70 pound sturgeon right in front of me. Right here. That was insane. <laughs> Well, that's probably where the big bluegill are going. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was crazy. Well, I don't know what to say about that. I've never seen a 70-pound sturgeon cruise by. I mean, like, seriously, that thing was at least four feet long. And Diane's got another fish. Going for the small game. No, that's a good-sized bluegill for this little spot. It's not as big as they get, but it might be as big as they get in this little pool. All right, I'm gonna cast out over here. That's a good hit. Fish on. And that is how you hobo fish. Beautiful. I think these are called pumpkin seeds. Got a little bit of an orange in there related to the bluegill, I believe. But let me know if you're a slack water, freshwater angler. Let me know because I don't know a whole lot about those freshwater, slow moving stream fish. Thanks, beauty. Through the brain. When his eyes dilate and his mouth opens, then you know he's done. This guy pretty much swallowed the hook, so we're gonna have to get in there and kind of dig it out. Maybe I can get it with a stick. There it is. Still get to keep my worm. See if we can catch another one. Now that I've dispatched him, I'm just gonna take a stick, run it through his gills. I'm gonna pin him into the dirt into the sand underwater so it stays refrigerated. Got one. 
<laughs> well, that one, I know I didn't get it on film, guys, but <laughs> that was pretty much the moment it hit the water. Let me try and film the next one. Look at the colors in this beautiful fish. There's colors in the, in the fins there, those blues. I don't know if you can see that. Beautiful blues, stripes, oranges. Really just very pretty fish. And they're super tasty. It's funny because they live in this kind of stagnant, slow-moving, muddy water. But they're really nice. Nice flaky white meat. Really like these. There you go. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Just wait until I see the bobber move. <laughs> I know. I am having fun. Oh my god, it swallowed it deep. So we're just gonna sit tight here for a second. See what happens. Just hit the water. Little guy. I'm telling you folks, if you've never tried hobo fishing, you gotta try it. <laughs> Baby, that's a nice so one. Cute. Look at that, guys. One of the things I should emphasize here is when you grab them, you wanna push the fins back. If you push from this side, they'll spike you really hard. So you wanna just kinda of pull them back. That way they fold down, and you can handle them real easily and they won't poke you. That's the one Diane just caught. Not too shabby. Oh, this is a tiny one though. That is an absolute ton of bluegill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen fish. So hobo fishing works. And we're gonna go cook. Let's go get some dry tender to make a tender bundle. I'm gonna do a bow drill to get a fire going. Once we get that going, we're gonna saute up maybe one or two of those fish. Give it a nice little taste test. This is north, this is west, this is east, that's south. What happens is if you have trees like this running east-west, then the sun is going basically east-west but kind of at a southern angle because we're in the northern hemisphere. That means this area in front of that tree line is always gonna be pretty dark. It's also gonna keep moisture because the sun's not gonna be beaten down on it, which means that these areas don't really have a lot of dry leaves. So this is not the area that I'm going to be looking for in my tender. Instead, I'm going to go to the opposite side, which you can see is in full sun. This is the southern side of an east-west riparian forest. And this is exactly the type of area that I'm going to look for to find nice dry leaves to get a, to get a bow drill fire going. All these are bone dry. These are all willow leaves. And even though they're sitting on the ground, they're sitting on sand. And this sand has not had any water on it for probably weeks. This used to be the old creek channel, but it's bone dry now. 
So I'm gonna get a bunch of this for my tender bundle. I'm gonna get some of these small diameter sticks and twigs as well for uh, kindling. We'll get some bigger stuff together, we'll get that bow drill going. Let's make us a fire and do some cooking. It's important to have something to lay down um, underneath your hearth board where it can gather some uh, <coughs> some powdered wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a couple of dry leaves to have that kind of accumulate on, but I've laid down some uh, willow bark on top of the sand. One of the main things that will happen if you're doing a bow drill in the sand is it starts to kind of like burrow down the more you put force into it and eventually you just start to get that ember going and then it kicks a bunch of sand into your uh, into your ember and it puts it out. So you need kind of an elevated platform and I think this willow bark is gonna be perfect for that. I think I'm about to go through right here. So I'm gonna make another notch over here. I'm gonna have to burn that in now. goes there it goes yep that's fire well my kindling was not perfectly prepared but got the job done so far. This willow is nice and dry, pretty much smoke free, which is cool. And we don't need much of a fire right now just to cook these little fish. And from there, we can transfer it on bigger pieces. That's it, rubbing some sticks together, trying not to burn off my eyebrows. We're gonna get this going, let it burn down to some coals. We're gonna cook some bluegill. I'm gonna pick a couple of them, and we're gonna scale them, gut them, and cook them. So, it's just a willow, willow branch, stringer. I'm just gonna go in the vent right here. I'm gonna cut right up to the base here, base of the uh, gills. And that, that's gonna open up the gut cavity right there. Reach in there, pull out the guts. Now if I was in the woods, these guts would be perfect. Well, obviously we are in the woods. If my life depended on it. These guts would be perfect for bait. That's been gutted. And now I'm gonna scale it. And I know it loses a lot of its color, but one of the cool things you can do, here I'm gonna get rid of these scales, is once you've done this, if you wanna, you wanna make it look more presentable because you've lost all the color by going against the grain, just go with the grain. And it won't bring back all of the color, but it'll bring back a lot of the color. It'll make it a lot prettier in a pan. Perfect for the pan, bluegill. I'm gonna do one more, and we're gonna cook them up.
Oh. Eyeball. It helps you see like a bluegill. Mm -hmm. That was kind of chewy. That's pretty good. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. Mm. Yeah, it's got good flavor. Mm. All right, let's do this fish. <clears throat> All right. Homemade willow chopsticks. Mm. Not bad, right? Good. That's a good little fish. Mm. I know. She's got allergies. These are good though. Mm. The skin's nice. Nice white flaky meat. It does not taste like mud or anything like that that you might expect from a fish living in muddy water. But and hmm, I'm gonna grab the salt. Uh, yes. Thank you, baby. We do have a lot of little bones, so you kind of want to eat around them. They're not big, but what they lack in size, they make up for in numbers and they're ferocious feeders as you've seen. Anything you throw at them, even a bear hook was getting hits. So it's a great fish to get kids started. It's a great fish to get new anglers started. Like I said, it's not native in California, so there's really no reason not to go for them. And as soon as the weather warms up, thank you dear, um, they really start hitting hard. So right now is a good time to get out, if you can get out. But just remember, if you're gonna do this, Keep your distance. Don't go to known places. Don't go to big lakes with a whole bunch of other people. Just find little spots like this. And be careful of the bones. Nice. So yeah, I didn't get any film of it. I was just kind of like jaw dropped. Wasn't expecting that at all, but there's about a four foot long um, dinosaur in there. What's that fish called, a dino? Sturgeon. Four foot long sturgeon in there. Absolutely gorgeous fish. And in they're 100% distinct. They've got these really cool diamond kind of patterns going down them. Without a doubt, that was a sturgeon. That was so cool to see. Here we are fishing for some of the smallest fish we've ever gone for on this channel. And one of the biggest fish I've ever seen just swims right by. Pretty these cool. These are really good though. They're totally good, right? garlic. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. Tail fin, like a little potato chip. Mm. Mm. You happy? Mm-hmm. Me too. <laughs> nice baby. <laughs> Turns out my baby loves to fish. <laughs> she won't let us leave until she loses her last piece of bait. I, I can't really complain about that. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> now she's just throwing them back. She's just having fun. I totally love this. I love that girl. <laughs> Alrighty folks, thanks for watching. And until next time, Keep the old ways alive. Piece of stick for a bobber, split shot, size six. And uh, this is way too much for an intro. Let's try it again. <laughs> no bacteria. Oh. Ready? No. No? No. 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 Kablammo! <laughs> we got fire. <laughs>